What I'd like to do is to set the scene for this symposium and uh, to also put into context why uh, we, the steering committee of the Garfield VT registry, are so excited about having the opportunity to undertake this piece of research. And it's really this. We all recognize the vital importance of cardiovascular disease. It does, uh, surprisingly, despite four decades of tremendous progress in the field of coronary artery disease, uh, in the... Um, uh, field of the management and prevention of stroke, uh, we are in a position where uh, cardiovascular disease still represents a major challenge for healthcare systems and for populations throughout the world. And of course, in recognizing uh, the problem of cardiovascular disease and its burden, the focus always tends to be on acute myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, but the third most common cause of cardiovascular mortality is, of course, pulmonary embolism. And therefore, VTE is increasingly recognized for its global health burden. And these are the kinds of statistics that were presented by this society, the International Society on Thrombosis and Hemostasis, as part of World Thrombosis Day. And we can see that in the United States, it's estimated that there are about 150,000 deaths a year uh, from fatal pulmonary embolism. In Europe, epidemiological modeling has suggested some half million deaths a year attributable to VTE. And around the world, the, the burden is substantial. That's why we decided to take forward the Garfield VTE registry as a prospective global disease registry, looking at two cohorts of just over 5,000 patients in each to be recruited uh, within 30 days of diagnosis of their venous thromboembolism, either deep vein thrombosis or pulmonary embolism, objectively confirmed, and followed thereafter for at least three years, uh, the purpose being to understand what the management of these patients is, not in the context of a mandated protocol, but as we clinicians around the world manage these patients, to understand how those management strategies differ globally, understand the kinds of outcomes that are achieved in broad, uh, prospectively followed and consecutively presenting patients with venous thromboembolism in a research methodology uh, that has very few exclusion criteria and therefore provides the opportunity to understand the behavior and burden of this disease the achievable outcomes beyond specialist centers and randomized trial practice, and therefore better understand how we might improve practice, and most importantly, generate hypotheses to test in future clinical trials. So what are the specific features of the Garfield VTE registry? Well, it is observational, and it does not select patients. It is prospective. We identify patients within 30 days of diagnosis. That's when they have to give consent. But of course, all information on the patient is collected from the time of diagnosis. Indeed, there is the capacity in the electronic data capture system to collect information on patients prior to their diagnosis of VTE to understand how risk factors impact on the subsequent outcome of venous thromboembolism and indeed how we manage patients with VTE uh, prior to their firm diagnosis. The study is conducted in some 420 sites in 28 countries around the world. And in addition to the kind of data that would be collected in a clinical trial, we're also evaluating patient reported outcomes. And in particular, with three-year follow-up, have modified uh, assessment tools to look at the impact in terms of quality of life and symptomatology for post-thrombotic syndrome and chronic thromboembolic uh, pulmonary hypertension. Uh, what's striking about this particular methodology is the fact that sites in countries are randomly selected based upon the distribution of care environments where VTE may be managed uh, as advised by the national coordinator leading the study in each country. And using this methodology, some 11,842 patients were assessed for eligibility. These are consecutive patients at the 420 sites. A number of them after assessment either declined to participate, 
did not meet the criteria, as limited as they are for, uh, in terms of exclusion, to participate in this, or died before giving consent. This allowed us to study prospectively for the next three years, or uh, as long as they survive, uh, some 10,878 patients, of which 10,677 have the objectively confirmed diagnosis of venous thromboembolism, which makes them the true analysis population for this registry. As I said, these patients are um, enrolled in, some, in 28 countries around the world that you can see distributed here. I think the care settings are particularly important because we tend to uh, identify patients for randomized trials uh, from large hospitals or specialist research centers. But an awful lot of VTE management, including uh, diagnosis of deep vein thrombosis, now takes place in the outpatient setting, in the primary care setting, and an awful lot of the burden of disease is actually seen in critical care uh, and, uh, of course, uh, in the uh, oncology setting. So all of these care settings are represented in terms of being able to identify consecutive newly presenting patients uh, and follow them thereafter. And you can see here the distribution of care settings summarized on this slide. Now, if we look at the presentation of VT, in the next few papers we'll give us some more detail on this, you can see that about 60% of patients in this registry presented with the diagnosis of deep vein thrombosis alone, and about 40% or just under with the combined diagnosis of a DVT and pulmonary embolism. If one looks at the uh, baseline uh, characteristics in these patients, half the patients uh, are female. Uh, the median age is some uh, 60 years with an interesting range. You can see a good distribution of uh, race and ethnicity across a global study. What's striking is that about 15% of patients had a prior history of venous thromboembolism. Just under 10% of patients have active cancer at the time they present with their venous thromboembolism, and a further 6% have a history previously of cancer. So about 15% or thereabouts of the entire population have either active or a history of cancer. Uh, there's a family history of venous thromboembolism in some 6% and known thrombophilia in just under 3%. If one looks at uh, provoking risk factors within the three months prior to a presentation and enrollment in the registry, uh, you can see that about a third of patients have at least one uh, factor, and you can see the distribution of factors here, 12% uh, uh, with uh, recent surgical intervention, 12% with recent hospitalization. Uh, you can see here the use of hormone r r uh, therapy, the oral contraception or replacement therapy uh, in uh, some 12% of patients. So a very uh, interesting group of patients in terms of both the distribution of risk factors and the capacity to follow up these patients over a long period of time. Now, if one looks at the population of patients, within uh, and ask the question what were the treatment strategies within 30 days of diagnosis of their thromboembolic event uh, you can see here that uh, just under 85 percent of the population were managed with uh, some form of anticoagulation be it parenteral uh, or oral uh, as their only intervention for managing their thrombosis uh, you can see an interesting group of 4.5% of other interventions, uh, and these reflect um, the use of thrombolytic therapy with or without anticoagulation in 3%, some form of surgical or mechanical intervention in just under 1%, uh, and interestingly, compression only or no therapeutic intervention in just over 10%. And those are going to be very interesting populations, again, to study over time uh, to understand what the natural history of disease is with those particular strategies, and indeed to understand the baseline characteristics of these patients that have driven clinicians uh, potentially to behave and practice in a certain way. 
We're now going to move into the body of our symposium, and we have distinguished colleagues, all members of the steering committee, Dr. Goldhaber from the United States, Dr. Haas from Germany, Dr. Weitz from Canada, and Dr. Turpey from Canada, who are going to present uh, either on the rationale uh, for the registry or indeed uh, emerging data from this registry, both in terms of baseline data and six-month outcomes. And it's now my pleasure to call upon Dr. Goldhaber to come and talk to us about VTE as a chronic disease. Thank you very much indeed.